I am Bill Cortright with Living Right with Bill Cortright. And this is the Stress Mastery Podcast, where we take you from the science to the spirituality of stress mastery. Hello, and welcome back to another episode here at the Stress Mastery Podcast. I am your host, Mark Middlestead. This week's episode of the Stress Mastery Podcast Weekend Edition is going to focus on the topic of the prison of belief systems. In yesterday's Ask Me Anything, I spoke about the power of programming and how beliefs shape our reality, specifically in answering the question of who we are. We can certainly become prisoners of our beliefs about who we are. Since this week's topic is the prison of belief systems, it's worthwhile to explore who we are even further from this perspective. Upon answering the question of who we are, the next logical question is, why are we here? There is probably no greater prison to be trapped in than our belief surrounding why we're here. Discovering who we are is like becoming aware that we've imprisoned ourself. Answering the question, why are we here?, is like being given the key to releasing ourselves from this prison of our belief system. But answering it is not quite so easy. Human beings have been searching for the meaning of life since the beginning of time. Even though knowing who we are can create awareness, it still doesn't unlock the door of this prison we find ourselves in. Searching for the meaning of life is being trapped in the most complicated, extravagant maze in existence where seemingly all paths lead to nowhere. Nowhere out, anyway. Our belief systems have been developed over hundreds of thousands of years, and while we humans have evolved, and our lives have gotten far more complex, our belief systems have not evolved along with us and remain almost as archaic as they are effective. Our belief systems keep us trapped in a prison that does not allow for change. The very definition of belief underlies its inherent inability to change. The dictionary defines it as an acceptance that a statement is true or that something exists, or as trust, faith, or confidence in someone or something. So you can see that one great tenet of belief itself is that it's basically worthless if it can be changed. Isn't this the very reason why religious beliefs cannot change? It doesn't matter if the religious theology is true or not. If untrue, it must change. Therefore, if it's changed, it was never true to begin with, and the entire foundation of the religion falls apart itself, rendering it meaningless. Is this any different than our belief in science? Neil deGrasse Tyson often says, The good thing about science is is that it's true whether or not you believe in it. Yet science, like religion, as a belief system, is on equally shaky ground. Not because it isn't entirely true, but that it is only true given the data behind the present proof in any given moment in time. Science told us the earth was flat, until it was proven to not be true. Then the truth was that the earth was round, until that was also proven to not be true. And for now, we believe the science telling us the earth is actually an oblate spheroid, or that it's slightly out of round and a little more flattened at the poles. Science told us the earth was the center of the universe, 
Until science proved the sun was the center of the universe. Until science said the center of our galaxy was the center of our universe. And yet today, science has proven our entire galaxy is not even the center of the universe. The science of Newton was an unquestioned belief until Einstein proved it to be only partially true. Then quantum physics came along and told us that the belief in Einstein's theory of relativity is only partially true. So both religion and science are belief systems that are, at best, only partially true. Yet we can remain a prisoner of either or both belief systems. Just as science and religion are belief systems that are not entirely true, politics is yet another belief system we can be held prisoner within. Those with extreme beliefs in either liberal or conservative political perspectives can be mired in their own belief systems so as to never know truth. The reason society often tells us not to gauge in either religious or political discussion is because of the intense, rigid, and faulty logic of the beliefs held within. And those prisoners trapped within those belief systems cannot remain within those confines and also keep an open mind. To create awareness of any untruth held within those unyielding walls would certainly collapse the entire system. This is certainly true of our tribal belief systems, be they of family, friends, institutions, or society itself. The very notion of questioning these belief systems is almost mutiny or treated as a defiant act of treason. Yet questioning belief systems and breaking free of these prison walls by self-authoring our life is going to create a lot of chaos for both ourselves and the tribe itself. Our tribes have taught us our beliefs about ourselves, the world around us, and how life should be lived. So there are a lot of buried, programmed beliefs deep within us that most have no awareness of. Let's look at the belief about age. We have an awful lot of faulty beliefs about age that aren't true. How old are you? Are you sure about that? I guess you probably are the age you say you are, given that every one of us was told what day and hour we were born. And then our family celebrates that day for the rest of our lives. Our age has to be put on almost every official document we hold or fill out, from our driver's license, social security numbers, tax documents, to marriage certificates, job applications, and more. We even have social ideas and rules of law surrounding our age. We're not allowed to do some things until we reach a certain age, and we are allowed certain benefits based on age. We humans sure are consumed by time passing and how old we are. But time is not real, and it only exists as a human construct. Yet we are more consumed with time than almost anything else in life. Another illusion of reality we place great importance on. So, of course, all of our programming about age stems from this illusion of time. Some people say you're only as old as you feel. But that doesn't make any sense because how we feel can vary from one day to the next or even moment to moment. If we're sick, injured, or tired, we can certainly feel older than when we feel healthy or well-rested. We also have expectations of people based on their age. We expect people in their 70s and 80s or older to be retired and really no longer viable, usable resources for the tribe to use. So we cast them off to nursing homes. 
We love them, yet the tribe has no use for them. We think of senior citizens as old, frail, weak, and wheelchair-bound, where they need round-the-clock care. I don't know about you, but that is not how I picture myself at that age. And that is just one faulty bit of programming that keeps us locked in the prison of belief systems out of thousands. It's just another myth. How old would you be if no one ever told you when you were born or how old you are? How would you know? Does it even matter? The truth is, we can become prisoners of our beliefs about age. And this imposes limitations on what we believe we can do or be. As a spiritual teacher, I've run into many preconceived ideas many have about spirituality and even religion itself. Religion, by its very definition, is limited in scope to the beliefs this tribe sets as to what is acceptable or not. Even the concept of God itself is limited to each religion's belief system. Within each religion, the programming teaches God can only be this or that, or that God cannot be this or that, even while they teach that God is everything, and all-powerful, all-knowing, omnipresent, and yet limitations are placed on God and on us, if we are to remain faithful and committed to that religious belief. Yet, isn't imposed limitations exactly what a prison is? When it comes to our careers, we are surely trapped within the prison of the tribal belief system. We're programmed to believe that our only purpose is to serve the tribe in a prescribed limitation as to what we are allowed to do with our life. The tribe doesn't care what our unique purpose in life is, and it certainly is not going to promote the idea that we should be self-authoring our life and fulfilling our unique purpose unless it also serves the tribe itself. The entire notion of going to school, achieving good grades in order to go on to college, in order to get a good job, with good pay and benefits, has nothing to do with our purpose, but rather how this will allow us to function within the prison walls the tribe has constructed for us. There are tribal belief systems regarding money as well. It teaches us lack, that there's only so much to go around, and we must compete with each other for these limited resources. And so, instead of understanding abundance, being trapped in this thinking, we struggle with getting our share and fight with others for it. So the belief system teaches us competition instead of cooperation. This idea even teaches us about relationships. Because the faulty logic of our belief system teaches us lack, it feeds our ego the idea that out of what we also lack personally, we must then rely on others to fill, creating expectations for others. Once we expect others in our relationships to fill something within us, This places conditions on the relationship. Anytime someone lets us down by not fulfilling these expected conditions, we will withhold something from that person for letting us down. This is what we call conditional love. But real love is unconditional. If we remain trapped in the prison of this belief system, Our love will always come with conditions. And this is not love at all. You can see how our program belief systems can imprison us into a mindset that, like prisons themselves, restrict us and hold us back from becoming free. Free thinkers, 
free to do whatever we were put here to do. And therein lies the problem with trying to answer the question, why are we here? Why are you here? If you remained imprisoned by your beliefs, you will never unlock that cell door. The secret to overcoming these faulty beliefs lies in answering the first question that I addressed in yesterday's podcast. Who are you? When you are aware and understand who you really are, you realize this prison of limited beliefs is self-imposed, which means you alone hold the key to releasing yourself from this prison. When you know who you are, you know the only way out is through personal and spiritual growth. By navigating your own path, following your own purpose, you will find your way out. You know beliefs are nothing but a collection of thoughts we hold to be true, even when they are not true. We've been programmed to believe there is no way out, but you know this isn't true. We've held ourselves captive all along. It's time to release your potential Break free from the cage that has held you and become anything and everything you desire. The key is awareness. And the map is simple to follow. What you think, you create. What you believe, you attract. What you imagine, you become. So why are we here? It is the single most important question anyone wanting to self-author their life can ask. Once you are aware of who you are, you'll find the answer within. Well, that's it for today's show. Our mission here is to create a shift in the planet. You can join us on this mission by simply clicking like, share, and subscribe. The links are right below the show notes. As always, until next time, stay inspired.